Okay, I got this vent-free space heater, uh, natural gas fueled, uh, 20,000 BTUs off of Amazon. So let's go ahead and see what it takes to install it. All right, this is what's inside of it. Got the bracket, a battery, bag of hardware, and of course the unit itself. Okay, we're going to start by prepping this heater for installation. There's a few things we need to do before we can uh, mount it on the wall, so we'll start with those. Okay, this unit is natural gas only, so it doesn't have the option for liquid propane, but many do. Uh, if you were to look at the bottom and it had two, this is natural gas, so it would have one here for liquid propane. You would unplug only the one you want to use, and then there would be a hatch on the back that you moved out of the way and selected which uh, type of gas you were using. But uh, we don't have to do that for this one. So essentially what we got to do here is simply remove the sticker, like so, and then we'll remove this uh, cap. And that exposes the threaded fitting for the natural gas connection. And the fitting that it requires is a 3 8 inch uh, threaded fitting. And you will just screw it in there as so, but not before you use uh, this uh, sealant tape, plumbing tape. Uh, this is for natural gas. You'll know that it's for natural gas because it'll have a yellow tint to it instead of white, which is used for traditional water plumbing. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap the threads in the tape and then I will install it into the proper area here. And uh, again, nice and tight, but you don't really have to reef on it too much. Um, just make sure it's really nice and tight and snug. Okay, here we are. We've got the tape around the, the fitting. And what we'll do is we'll uh, put this in, get it started by hand, I'll continue uh, tightening it with a tool until it's in all the way. Okay, I've got it in there pretty tight now, um, as tight as I could do by hand and felt comfortable with. And if you ever worry about being not tight enough, what you can do at the end is get some soapy uh, half water, half uh, dish soap. And you put the suds, you mix it up, put the suds all over the connection here when you have the gas going. And if it blows any bubbles or there's any leaks, it'll be very apparent first thing. And you don't have to put uh, this uh, tapered end. It doesn't require uh, any of this tape. Uh, in fact, you just uh, tighten it by hand uh, nice and tight and the taper will create the, uh, the connection required. Okay, I almost forgot. You need to unscrew the starting button and install the battery. So essentially, you just drop it down in there, just like that, and you screw it back on. And you'll know it's working, because if you push it, you will see down there. Looks like we've got a working button. Okay, on the back of the unit, uh, we actually have to install these spacers at the bottom, which is where we are now. Uh, I'm not sure why they didn't ship with them in there, <laughs> but uh, we're essentially going to put the uh, threaded bolt through the spacer and then get our screwdriver and screw it in in the bottom left and bottom right corners, and that will be uh, the spacers. So that's basically all you need to do with this unit. And then you grab the bracket, because that's the next part of it, and when you install the bracket on the wall, it's essentially just gonna hang on the wall, like so, once the bracket is on the wall. So it's simple enough to uh, install the bracket, we'll do that next, and we'll get this thing hung. You might want to just take a moment to measure and make sure where you're going to put your bracket is not within the range of said clearances. Okay, so I've uh, got the bracket taped to the wall. And what you do is you tape it to the wall and you use your level to make sure that it's well. 
perfectly level. And once you do that, you are going to mark the outside holes. They say only mark and drill through the outside holes. I'm not sure why, but it's what the instructions say. So uh, I'm going to do that and then I'll mount the bracket. Okay, I've got her all drilled into the wall. So now all I've got to do is slide these two brackets into these two holes on the back of the unit and it will hang. So we have the heater on the wall all ready to go. I can show you the side here. It's mounted on the brackets and the spacers are down below. I will be adding more space to the spacers to just bring it out from the wall just a fraction of an inch, but it should be good to go. And the only thing we're missing, of course, is the natural gas connection. So if we look below, that's the fitting I fitted earlier. And here I have the natural gas supply line from a previous heater that I am replacing with this one. So again, because it's tapered, you don't need any of that yellow uh, uh, tape. You can just go ahead and tighten it nice and snug and you're good to go. Okay, I've got it on there nice and snug and uh, used, of course, uh, a wrench to do that. So it is on quite, uh, well, snugly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the natural gas next. Okay, now before we go ahead and turn it on, what you're going to want to do is get a uh, vestibule of sorts and fill it about equal parts water and dish soap and uh, liquid dish soap and uh, when you're done that shake it up really good I did shake it up before and it kind of settled since then but I'll do it again and you're going to take that solution and you're going to liberally apply the suds and the bubbles around this connection and the other connection to your home if you haven't tested it already and you're going, when you turn on the natural gas for the first time, you're going to watch very closely for bubbles or any type of spurting or hissing. You want to make sure this is an airtight connection. Okay, I have the gas turned on now. And as you can see, no bubbles, no spurting, no, no nothing. So I would say that's a nice connection. Okay, so... Now it's time to give it a start. Essentially what you need to do is turn it to off, which is this position, and leave it there for five minutes. Even if and perhaps it was switched earlier on or you fiddled with it when it was being installed, but make sure it's here for five minutes. That'll make sure any gas has cleared out. Then you'll push down on the knob here and turn it to pilot. This is pilot. Now, in order to light it, you will hold down pilot while pushing the start button until the pilot light ignites. And there's the pilot light. After the pilot light comes on, hold the button down for 10 to 30 seconds. And if you let go and it stays on, then you are in business. Okay, and to start it, once you have the pilot going, you push down just slightly on the knob until it starts to turn. This is high, and then there we go. So now it's lit. And to change, oh, it's warm above here. <laughs> to change temperatures, you push down slightly and rotate to medium or to low based on your desired heat level. And there you have it. And in the end, you'll have a surprisingly attractive and exceedingly functional space heater. On high mode, the heat coming off of this thing is just fantastic. I hope you found this mini tutorial helpful and many warm winter days to you.